Hi there, and thank you so much for checking out this bullet journal video. April is approaching, which is crazy, and I can't believe I'm planning the fourth month of the year already. So I'm painting again this month, but I have gone for acrylics this time instead of watercolour. It's not my preferred medium, I find them kind of difficult to use sometimes, but this design is quite simple and I wanted really opaque solid colours, which of course isn't really what watercolour gives you, and I didn't have the colours I wanted in gouache. I actually didn't have the right colours in acrylic either, but I could pretty much get the ones I wanted pre-made at my local craft shop for quite cheap. But as I found later, buying bad quality acrylic is just really annoying. <laughs> anyway, as you can see for my cover page, I marked out a circle in the centre and painted it a pale yellow. The coverage was not good and the pencil lines underneath were almost enhanced somehow rather than covered up. So I ended up having to give it three coats which you didn't have to see through the magic of editing, of course. But uh, when it was finally dry, I started painting some tall white florals in the circle. I'm not really sure what these flowers are. They're just tall <laughs> and really loosely painted. Maybe delphiniums or larkspur or hollyhocks. I don't really know. And also it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just randomly blobbed the paint, starting narrow at the top and getting a bit wider as I went down. I made sure there was a fair amount of paint on the end of the brush and really blobbed it on quite thickly. I did three of those at varying heights and then added in the stems and a few random lines in between the flower heads themselves, giving the impression that they're all linked together. This was another annoying thing about the paint, when you try to do delicate thin lines, it really doesn't flow very well. Even adding water doesn't work too well and you can't add too much water because then it will lose opacity. I know you can get special mediums that make it flow better, but I wasn't really looking to spend any more money and it seemed like a waste to add it to some really cheap rubbish paint. <laughs> it didn't turn out too bad, it's just not quite as neat as I would have preferred, I think. But after that, I went in and blobbed another layer of white paint on top of some of the flowers I'd already done so that they were a bit brighter and then that sort of gives it a bit of depth, but not too much as I wanted to keep it fairly simple. I mixed up a little bit of brown and white to use here and there to show the centre of a flower and felt like the green of the leaves was a bit bright so I mixed a tiny bit of the brown with the green and added a few streaks of the toned down colour which I think made it look a little better. I added a few sparkles around the flowers with gold watercolour I forgot to hit record on my camera for that bit so you can sort of see them against the yellow there. I added the April title with a 0.8 nib black ink pen. I toyed with a few different options for this and decided black ink would be the best. I'm not quite sure that was the right decision to be honest. I can't really put my finger on why though. There aren't many pens that can write on acrylic paint so unless I used a brush pen on white paper and then cut it out and stuck it on which I did actually try off camera and I also didn't really like the look of. The black ink kind of felt like the only option. I don't hate it or anything, it's just not my best work, I don't think. If you have any thoughts on alternative ideas for this title, then uh, let me know in the comments. I felt like the page needed a little extra something to finish it off, so I added a gold edge to the top and the bottom. Although, looking at it now, I'm thinking, why didn't I make it a Dutch door? <laughs> I don't know why that didn't come to me at the time, but never mind. Moving on to my calendar page, and I started off with my painted elements first to allow them time to dry while I drew the calendar. Although I only used yellow on the front cover, this setup uses three colours. I also have a pastel pink and a greenish blue, or maybe it's a bluish green. I'm using a pink Crayola felt pen to draw my calendar, and I can't remember if I've ever used them to draw straight lines before, but it's really difficult. The nib slides so easily over the smooth surface, it just wants to go all over the place. I actually ended up measuring the grid slightly incorrectly, and my top box was a bit taller than the rest. To fix that, I decided to colour in a double strip. I kept the very top one for the days of the week, and then the one below, I started to write the dates of the month out, and that seemed to sort the issue.
In my circle at the bottom, I painted some really simple daisies. I used the brown to depict the centres of the flowers first, and then built the side view of the daisies around them. Drawing a side view of them makes it really quick and easy to do. It's pretty simple to do, I just use a thin brush loaded with white and paint long petals going into the centres. I press down a little harder on the outer part of the petal and then apply less pressure towards the middle so it kind of gets a slightly elongated teardrop shape. My habits page is next and I again do all the block colour painting first to let it dry. I'm doing mini circles at the bottom on this one and I didn't realise it at the time but it kind of looks like a pastel traffic light. <laughs> Anywho, I'm drawing my habits separately this time instead of a grid with them all in as I often do. It's more time consuming not drawing it in a grid as you have to write out the numbers so many times but it does look really nice like this. I alternated between pink, yellow and green for the boxes and I think these pens are a fairly good match for the paint. The pink didn't actually dry quite as light as I was hoping but I just went with it, it's fine. In the circles I did mini versions of the flowers that I'd already done, but I was really indecisive about what to do in the pink one. I ended up going for a cow parsley type plant, I think it's called Queen Anne's Lace in North America, but I didn't really like how it turned out that much. It's fine in the small circle, but I decided to try something else in the rest of the spread. To finish off the page, I added some more of the gold sparkles around the titles and the flowers. Next up is my plant watering tracker, and I did do this one in a grid format. I really didn't want to write all those numbers again, and at this time of year I don't need to water the plants that often, so I'm not going to be ticking things off that frequently, and it seems a bit of a wasted effort to draw them all out individually. I've got my traffic lights at the bottom again, but they're even smaller this time. In the pink one, I did really simple five petal blob flowers and painted a brown branch for a cherry blossom. And I do like that a lot better than the one I did on the previous page. So I kept going with that design throughout the rest of the spread. The next page I've made into a quote page. I decided to do that because just before designing this spread, I went on a one day yoga retreat and there were some readings that really spoke to me. They were a lot longer than this, but I've kind of condensed it into one short sentence and it's pursue that which feeds your soul. And it feels really obvious because of course you should do what you enjoy doing. And I feel like it's a message that we're often told, but for some reason the word pursue just kind of made it hit different for me. Like, it's okay for me to actively go after what brings me joy and enriches my life. I mean, I knew that already, but it just suddenly felt different in that moment, and I can't really explain why. Anyway, I just wanted to capture that feeling and have it there as a reminder whenever I look at it. So I did another circle on this page, and I don't know why, but I made it smaller than the cover page for some reason. 
I really have no explanation for why I did that. It probably would have looked better taking up more space on the page, but whatever. I did a larger blossom branch, continuing to create the florals in this really simplistic paint blobby style and then connected it all with a branch and then added brown centers to the flowers and finished it off with little brownish green leaves filling in the gaps. I added my quote in the same simple cursive font and then finished the page off with some more gold sparkles. Moving on, the next page is my to-do list and I started off the same as the others, painting in all the bits I needed to give some time to dry first. I was only doing one bit of decorative painting at the bottom of this double page spread, so to make it look less blank I used a very pale Tombow brush pen to highlight every other line. And uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> it's pretty simple, but it's uh, going to fulfil its purpose. I did want something a lot simpler this time. I absolutely love how my March setup turned out, but it was very time consuming, so I'm glad this one is simpler and quicker to create. My gratitude page is on the other side, and as usual I am using a line for each date of the month. I used the brush pen again to highlight every other line, but as the numbers didn't reach the end of the page, I kind of just stopped when the numbers ran out, but that then left a chunk at the bottom that wasn't highlighted. And it does look kind of weird seeing as it goes all the way to the bottom on the other side. So I did go back in later and finished off the rest of the page for the sake of symmetry. I did my really simple daisies in the half circle. This time I did the petals first and then the centers afterwards. And I think that helps to space them out a little bit better. These are so simple to paint. If you're not really a painter, but want to get into it, this is a really good thing to try because they're kind of hard to get wrong really and if they're a little bit wonky or whatever then that's okay because nature isn't perfect. I feel like I've sounded a little negative on occasion about this setup so far and there are definitely elements that I'm not loving but I really like how my weekly spreads have turned out. For the first page I painted a pink circle at the bottom but part of it is hidden behind the grid I'm drawing. I'm doing this again with the felt tip pen and I've got a week per page going down vertically. Keeping the theme going, I'm doing white blossom in the pink circle. Then on the opposite page, I'm doing the same thing, but my circle is yellow at the top. And this one is becoming a Dutch door with the white part of the page being removed. I painted the same thing on the other side of that page. Then at the next page, the circle is in the middle with the daisies and again, cutting out the Dutch door. On the final page, I made that space for my memories and it did another pink circle at the bottom. That way you get the same effect on both sides when you flip the two middle pages. There was quite a bit of white space either side of that so I did some more gold lines to finish it off and yeah I really love how this one turned out. And that is April all finished. Overall I'm really happy with how this turned out. There were definitely a few bits here and there that I wasn't loving but yeah on the whole I'm happy with it. I really love the simplicity of the limited colour palette and my favourite page was definitely the weekly spreads with the Dutch doors. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and it might have given you some inspiration. Please feel free to leave a comment and a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more arts and crafts and bullet journals. Thanks so much. Bye.